I've been a big fan of Book Club for a while, um, ever since it kind of popped up on my feed. I love how fun the sets look. I love that they play different types of music than what you're used to in Clubland. Um, and I just love the whole vibe about what they do. And to be honest, watching loads of Book Club mixes has kind of inspired me to relaunch my YouTube sort of mix series thing that I was doing from before. I was obviously doing the test mix stuff that I'm going to obviously shelf, but I've decided to rebrand one of my channels that I've had and name it Persistence Radio, which is where I'm going to be having all of my live stream DJ sets be recorded on here. Um, I'll probably end up recording a few and not live streaming them and just leaving them available on my channel, which will be Persistence Radio. You can find that obviously on YouTube if you search for it, but I'm going to be uploading like clips and highlight reels of like, you know, blends I enjoyed as well. All that malarkey and just basically making sure all that stuff is online including of course my actual normal legit flipping you know um sets where it goes on for like two hours or whatnot that i think is was super 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 important but i was watching this interview courtesy of this channel called Derek g a music journalist who you know talks about nightlife and club culture and dance music and shit that i like and speak about on my own pod and he had a really cool and insightful very um you know expansive um, very deep, very inspirational interview with the founders of Book Club, who happen to be a brother and sister duo. Happen to be brother and sisters. Pretty cool, isn't it, right? That they get to kind of create this amazing platform together um, as siblings and whatnot. And um, I learned some really cool things um, regarding them and how they got their start of um, starting Book Club and how it's kind of blown up over time. But I'm going to play a clip here, which is titled How Book Club Radio Went Viral Speaks Volumes with Derek G. So let's play this actual clip where they kind of detail how they did in fact go viral also where we had our first book club party was like my really? kitchen and then the living room is right there were you just throwing parties from time to time yeah i mean we were just throwing lots of parties here because we're really lucky we don't have any neighbors on our walls so it's like very rare in new york so we just get really really loud and it gave us kind of the freedom to be really really loud so we would throw really late loud parties and then they're just pre-games before we yeah, go out lots of pre -ga every pre -game. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> pregame every pregame probably every pregame is here <laughs> we both started djing in very different spaces but around the same time so we would practice at these pre-games or our friend would have just a birthday party on the roof and we would be practicing together um and so we we would meet up weekly you know and um go out to parties afterwards and so that's kind of where the book club radio came from um because we were just meeting up regularly and then also we were like obsessive because every time there was a party we were like okay can we dj and then we would play for like seven hours straight it was just or sometimes longer like we were like just sitting there the whole time maybe not really enjoying the party enough but just had, like falling in love with that process i'm a big fan of these guys i think they're super super cool and i do love the idea of how organic the book club thing came about i also love that they got these really interesting rules about how they put the party together basically you're not allowed to use your phone you're not allowed to face the dj you're meant to just kind of vibe and just have a good time and it kind of reminds me of the early days of boiler room actually which is weird because you know they've kind of made sure to make it very clear that they don't try to be like these other um dj mix series type of things it's its own little thing as well that kind of exists in its own universe but it really is interesting how it does remind me of the early days of boiler room because early days of boiler room especially if you watch some of the early episodes from like in berlin and shit where it was like really busy but it was like back in the day i think they might have filmed it i'm not gonna i'm not gonna lie i think it might be i think it might be prince charles they may have filmed a couple in the club called prince charles and maybe in trezor or one of those places but if you look at some of those early boiler rooms from like seven ten years ago you'll notice people just going crazy right and just enjoying themselves despite there being a camera that's facing the dj and sometimes a roaming camera in the crowd capturing people dancing and whatnot people just don't give a fuck they're having a good time and they're enjoying themselves and that was part of the reason why people like myself went to clubs 
Um, you know, part of the reason why I went to clubs was seeing fucking footage, grainy footage, horrible footage. I used to sometimes go online on YouTube and I'll just search for my DJ I want to pick. Let's say because of the Lobos, and I'll just go on a YouTube search and click upload date. Every weekend I'll be doing this to so fine tune this one just to see where he was playing around the world. And I'll be looking at all the videos that random people will be uploading on YouTube of him playing in Bucharest, him playing in Hungary, him playing oh Bucharest, him, him playing in Kiev, him playing in you know Botswana, wherever he went with Zanzibar, all these different places you'll see him playing for the weekend of where he was people uploading this is obviously before instagram became a thing but the whole premise of why i was doing it because i wanted to see what that in club vibe and electricity was like and i think nowadays especially when it comes to my djing and the way that i do things because some of my club gigs unfortunately i've kind of slowed down and dried down which has been a maybe a blessing as well because you know i was a bit maybe cut caught in a bit of a rut or stuck in a rut to be fair because the places i was playing that aren't really that great they're just like regular bars and pubs but i do want to obviously play in all the big um established clubs out there that i always kind of wank and cream about over here on a podcast but the only way to kind of really do that is to kind of play the stuff that obviously they play in those type of places which i can't obviously play in bars and clubs so i always wanted to illustrate that and being the way be looking the way that i am being from where i am i thought it was always really important to have that different face presenting that kind of music behind the dj because you're so used to seeing a particular person play that type of music it's just nice to kind of mix it up and see where i'm kind of coming from what's influenced my style you know my techniques my approach my vibe everything all of that is really important i feel like especially to kind of inspire the next generation going forward but just selfishly anyway selfishly 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 as a lover of music as a lover of the scene as a lover of dancing i just want to be able to play a set you know on, on 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 a sick system and be able to fucking share it with people so i get the opportunity to go to pirate which is an amazing service where you can do these kind of you know self-checking dj studio things i can record myself there for hours upload the footage on my channel and then have the ability to share it and touch you know people from around the world and who knows maybe in the future that could kind of go on to kind of you know allowing me to establish my career as a dj and obviously going and playing at some of the big clubs i want to play at but from what i've learned from the book club the most important thing and the thing that is something that i've kind of put by the wayside and i haven't really done even with mixes on soundcloud is just sharing my love for music sharing my approach for djing sharing my joie de vivre whenever i get behind the roof and behind the decks and what that kind of does to me and the electric feeling i get and the happiness i feel from just playing and mixing and trying out new techniques and trying out different fucking combos and whatever i got all of that from fucking listening to those guys at the book club the brother and sister team honestly incredibly inspiring um i love their approach to everything and to me to be fair as well I have to give these guys more ratings because this is a very ignorant take because I haven't been to America in a long time. The last time I went to New York might have been like 2007 or something. But judging by how these guys are talking about their party, I feel like it's a lot harder to make a party work in America, especially in a place like New York or wherever it may be, than it would be in a place like London. I feel like the behaviors of people or ravers is a bit harder to kind of wrangle. So they have to do a lot to basically make people be you know be on their best behavior for lack of a better word and the fact that they've done it being so young and being so quote unquote inexperienced in the scene and they've basically achieved it because you see it you see it visually tactile tactically you can feel it from the videos when you watch the live streams or the videos that they fucking upload you can tell that these guys have put a lot of effort into making sure that they without being patronizing educate and inform their you know their ravers and their customers and their community of how to properly rave and how to properly interact with the spaces that they are kind of putting forth and so far they've done a stellar job and i think they even announced in this interview which was filmed a while ago um that they were playing in coachella from the back of that sting the girl on the left is taking music full time and touring all around the country whatever it may be so they've absolutely smashed it obviously those are amazing benefits but i think the by and large the ability to just share the music with people is fucking amazing and i actually do like the the, the idea about themes i'm not too sure if i'm going to copy it with my mixes because i usually just try and do different genres i don't really do them like a, as a theme they're kind of doing like like you know descriptive themes and then kind of trying to craft a set around that but obviously because they're so young and so new into djing it is a good way to kind of fast track your learning if you're like okay cool my theme is like you know robotic sci-fi you know dystopian whatever blah blah, blah. you then get choose to fit that theme 
and that allows you then to be able to kind of learn and kind of you know record dig and be really really out there more so than if you just was playing a straight up house set so i don't mind the themes and i think it all adds to it and i actually love the titles actually of the videos i think a lot i think the girl maybe was a bit embarrassed when the guy was reading it out but i actually like the titles of the video i think it's quite nice to see you know them writing these descriptive almost you know emma chamberlain vlog style flipping titles for their for their mixes as opposed to the usual stuff that you're used to seeing from djs where it's like the date of when it was recorded and shit and that's basically it, but no real description of what you're gonna hear like sonically um from the mix set itself so i recommend you check it out really cool interview courtesy of this guy called derek g that i'm subscribed to on youtube he's got a really cool account he talks really well about music and it's a really good interview i think i've got about 50 minutes left of the actual full interview to kind of listen to but i think it's really cool to check out i'm gonna play one more half of the i'm gonna play a little bit more of this clip and then we're gonna move on to the next topic yeah you're relatively new to djing like in the last few years it's not like you've been djing for 10 years type thing yeah that's true i yeah i'm like <laughs> I we, think so, yeah go ahead yeah we basically started i guess getting into it about a year before we started the parties but i like you kind of back to that journalism conversation i didn't feel like a proper dj so literally my first full length set by myself was recorded and that was the first book club meeting so you really see us learning and you see us growing in this space which at first i was so nervous about because i was like oh my gosh i'm not a legit dj i'm gonna put this on youtube i'm so nervous and my girlfriend's like no one's gonna see it why are you <laughs> who's gonna see it and then literally it blows up and i'm like okay so it's okay but i think wow. it's good because i think a lot of people feel like they can't put themselves out there unless they're seasoned and i think it's a really big learning opportunity and i that's words of virgil abloh by the way virgil abloh and kanye were two of the biggest proponents about learning in public learning aloud learning in real time it's something that a lot of creatives don't like to do everyone myself included you want to burrow away in your little cave and then present your fucking masterpiece to the world but sometimes especially nowadays in the digital age actually learning in public and learning aloud it's actually quite beneficial, especially if you're doing it on places where people can actually see a track record of what you've done. They can go on your YouTube account, click by all this, see your first set that you uploaded and be like, oh shit, this guy's really fucking improved. Look how much he's grown over the fucking years. So I think it's a really smart idea that they did that. I think it also just breaks the stigma that, you know, anyone can DJ. Yeah. 100%. Tell me more about that. Said. Tell me more about that and anyone can DJ because I know that in certain circles, the discourse is like, not everyone can or should DJ and, and D DJ culture is, uh, you know, um, not about just filming yourself and putting it on TikTok. Um, but I think that what, what appeals to me about what you guys do is that there is that earnest enthusiasm, honesty, passion, and it isn't like, and while being, while being, you know, recommended or, or said told by your girlfriend that you should upload it I, I do feel like there's an energy transference of like you're not trying to be anything you know you're just having a good time and that's a really good point that he makes and something that i think i've kind of lost track of as well because i remember when i was actually playing often especially when i was recording my own mixes and uploading them on soundcloud most of the reason i was just doing it just for, for the fun of it it's just fun to kind of you know record dig for the week present that record digging in the form of a mix and then share that you know on places like soundcloud and allow people to kind of you know see what my taste level was like what my interest was like what type of stuff i like to like bounce and bop to and stuff i think that's really fucking interesting and i think nowadays actually nowadays is probably more important which is probably echoing onto the thoughts that elijah does with his um whole marketing drive about everybody being a dj because we actually need that more than ever we need more people out there to just do or to just DJ for the fun of it. DJ because they feel like, oh, this is missing. Maybe you're somebody that likes a particular brand of hip hop. Maybe you're somebody that's uh, pissed off that there's not enough R&B out there. Maybe you want to mix up the game and change it and you want to play more and you want to hear more country music played in more clubs. You go and do it. 
you present it, you present your idea of what you'd like and share it with people or just present it and just share it just in general and just be able to kind of express yourself with that medium. It's really important, if anything. So maybe not everybody needs to be fucking, you know, uh, a jet setting DJ, but I really do think it's important that people share what they like listening to and maybe in a weird roundabout way that will go and a long way kind of influencing what is played on the dance floors which is really important too, because I feel like nowadays, especially it can sometimes be a bit stagnant and a bit stale, which is why places like book club are really impressive or platforms like book club are really impressive because they present a different style of what you'd expect to hear in like clubs, quote unquote. And obviously with, from an American lens, it's really important too. different type of demographic, different type of age. I think all that is really important to kind of, you know, give you a really rich and well-rounded view of this global dance music scene that we all love. What, what do you think in response to that? I mean, I agree with Tenzo that everyone can be a DJ. I mean, I don't know that everyone should be a DJ, but like, I mean, maybe everyone should be a DJ. Like I, I every time someone's like, oh, I want to try or, you know, I invite them to try and I'm always open to give tips. And, you know, I haven't been DJing for a long time, but I d firmly believe that everyone can DJ. And I think you know technology has made it easier and easier to dj but ultimately like djing is really just playing music for people and selecting music and playing music for them and so you know through the years it's become more complicated and less complicated with you know technics and mixers and keeping the party alive and juggling records but like those aren't necessarily things that you need to do to DJ like ultimately it's just playing music for people and I think sometimes it gets it too convoluted I agree with that 100% agree with that 100% agree with that and I think nowadays just become a little bit more too samey especially vibe wise especially in London I feel like London has definitely kind of suffered in terms of people just playing the same type of music especially depending on what type of parties they are the themes the the groove the tempo it's all kind of the same. So it is quite interesting and nice to see, especially on, a, on, a, on an online platform. I think where Book Club Radio really kind of shines is that it's a platform where you can hear things that you probably wouldn't hear in a club. I think the the girl Tizzo actually mentioned it. That's one of the big reasons why people kind of like the platform because it's also a place where you can hear maybe a little bit more down-tempo stuff that you probably wouldn't hear at a peak time club or whatever it may be. Um, so it's pretty cool. And then just as a final point, I think they said that they kind of started Book Club Radio as like a pre-game thing. And I love the evolution of like, it started off as a pre-game way to kind of get yourself pumped for the night out. But now it's turned into its own night out where people, you know, that that's pretty cool. Like it's now become the the whole night. So big up them two. Um, absolutely amazing. Can't wait to see how they evolve and go on from there. They obviously played Coachella. They're doing a tour and all that malarkey going forward. So check them out if you haven't already. Book Club are fucking cool. And um, I think they even mentioned as well that they purposely, because I remember one time I was thinking, oh, what? I'd like to go there. I couldn't really find much information online. They said, oh, you have to actually read our posts and kind of get through certain bits and bobs but obviously somebody else has come that you know as a friend they can obviously bring you in but they purposely make it a little bit difficult to go to just to kind of weed out all the posers and all the people that are just not in it for the right reasons which again is another really clever little master stroke there in order to make sure that they kind of cultivate the best environment or the best people best community to kind of rave with and do whatever they're doing so big up the book club i'm a big 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 fan of them book club radio they fucking smash it which is interesting as well because there's a club in london actually i think there's many clubs around the world probably called it but there's one in particular in Shoreditch it's called the book club actually that was a bit of a a bit of a stomping ground for me back in the day when i was at first going out so it's pretty cool to see everything kind of come around full circle so big up book club radio big up book club radio moving on from book club radio moving on from book club radio there's actually two events this weekend that i've actually got my eye on courtesy of ra so big up ra again with the events listings and shit you know i'll go on with them guys so i've been checking for some parties to go to on a weekend to kind of shake my money maker but then i've also got work to do i should really be streaming i should really be recording dj sets to upload onto my newly launched persistence radio channel where i'm going to be uploading most of my live streams and most of my dj mixes and clips of my dj mixes and what that malarkey i should really be focusing on that but there are two parties in particular that i've got my 
aisle and I'm thinking, hmm, maybe I should go to these. One in particular is at the cause featuring DJ Heartstring, um, Effie, Lola So, Memphis LK, um, Sam Gerling, and Tommy Houlihan. That might be a pretty decent party. Um, Origins and Teenage Dreams um, link up. There's then there's um there's a reposit um party happening as well in Electroworks that should be pretty cool. But the standout one that I'm actually also looking forward to maybe checking out is this party called Goodness, featuring Mama Snake, who might be who might be one of the best female DJs on the scene that doesn't get recognized as much as she should. She's obviously she's definitely one of the smartest. Um, if you know, you know. But she definitely might be one of the best female DJs on the scene that doesn't get spoken about enough. Mama Snake is a boss, like, for real, for real. She's the truth. So I'm really eager to go see her. Jazz also performing. Big fan of the album that came out a couple of years ago. Um, you got Yosuke Yukimatsu, who most of you know, the, the Japanese dude who plays with his top off and he he doesn't know what genres mean. He's all over the place in a fucking good way. That'd be cool to kind of check him out. Alexis, per, uh, somebody called um, Alexi... Pirella, um, Moritz von Moritz von o, um, Oswald, which would definitely be a live set, I'm assuming, and Polygonia playing as well. So it's a pretty sick lineup on both days, um, on the Friday and the Saturday. If I had to probably pick one, I would really want to go to. It might be the Fold Night, just because of the lineup and the people who are playing. I'm more familiar with, and obviously it's a bit of a one-off chance to see Mama Snake, Jess, and your and your Yosuke Yuki Matsu play all in one lineup as well, with the addition, of course, of Morris Van Vaughn. What sort? But two pretty cool events that I would recommend for those of you who are in London who are looking for places to go out this weekend because it seems like the last couple of months or these couple of months there's been a bit thin on the ground in terms of nights out maybe it's because of the festival season all the best DJs are out playing all around the world that's my that might be part of oh there's that Laura L- L- Halo also is playing as well that's would be pretty cool too Leroy Halo, is that going to be a live set, a DJ set? Not too sure, but this will be a good one too to go check out the Jazz Cafe. Um, Laurel Halo presents Atlas and Lila Bordelli or Bordwell. Um, so definitely check those out as well if you are that way inclined. But yeah, it feels like this last couple of months as well has been a bit, like I said, a bit dry. Maybe because of festivals, maybe because people are double booked, maybe because people just don't want to play. I'm not too sure, but either way, I would recommend you check out The Cause on Saturday for this day and night party, which would be pretty decent, I think, because The Cause has got an amazing outdoor space, really fucking nice. Um, It's going to be really warm this weekend as well, so that would be pretty nice. And also, oh, the, the, they've only got actually RA, they've only got fucking, um, what you call it? Um, night tickets actually the day tickets actually sold out so it's proof that um, the cause are smashing it during the summer man yeah so it's going to be fun during the summer to be at the cause so check that out if you are that way inclined and then of course there's the event at Fold that I mentioned that I'm also looking to check out which is goodness featuring Mama Snake Jess and Yuki Matsu as well so I'm actually I'm actually actually pleased to see a lot of these places still have tickets left as well so I can do a last minute one or maybe check out a ticket swap if I need be but yeah recommend you check it out if you haven't already recommend you check it out if you haven't already